Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Cooking Connection virtual cooking class. I am your host for tonight, Scott Tompkins. Uh, my friend and commandant, as always, commandant, com comrade, comrade's the word I'm looking for. As always, my eternal fact checker, the one who always keeps me on the straight and narrow, Miss Chef Charlotte Samuel. She's here. Thank you. She's moderating. She's in the chat. Welcome, Chef. What an what an, an introduction. Quite an intro. Well, what an introduction. For those of you that were with us last week, we did a 12-hour grilling open. Uh, if you did stay the entire 12 hours, I know there's those of you that did, uh, drop us a line in, uh, in the chat. We'll be happy to congratulate you and say congratulations on this momentous occasion of saying on our uh, Facebook and YouTube page, 12 hours straight, like Charlotte and I. Uh, for those of you that are watching on uh, Facebook and YouTube, welcome. We would uh, love to obviously invite you to the classes. You can always go to our uh, Zoom link, go to hb.com slash classes. You can join the classes. You can ask live questions. If not, we have some great content for you as well. But otherwise, we're happy you're here to join us. Um, if you wanted to check out what you missed on the 12 hour grilling open, you can always go to our Facebook and YouTube page. You can check out all 12 hours of fantastic content. But tonight, Tonight, we had, to, we had to figure out a theme for tonight, and, and I think that the tonight's theme was a date night done right. I uh, have no idea why I'm doing it, because I usually get date night wrong, but you know what? Tonight, we're going to get no, it right. No, uh, We're don't. going to I stop, know your wife. Stop. You do date right, right. The, uh, <laughs> date night right. Uh, no, 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 no. So you should have in front of you four recipes. If you don't have the recipes in front of you, I'm going to go through them with you so you know exactly what you're in for the next 60 minutes. It's going to be an action-packed uh, four recipes. I'm going to be moving. I'm going to be sweating. We're going to get everything done. And we're going to plate it up and show you just how easy it is to make a simple date night at home. So we're going to start with now Instapot beef bourguignon. So back in the, I believe it's the late 1960s now, uh, before I was around, uh, Chef <laughs> Julia Childs made the Mastering the Art of French Cooking. She had the beef bourguignon, which I think popularized it uh, for those of us in the United States. It's a great dish. It is a typically a very long dish. Now, if you have the cookbook, uh, the Julia Child's cookbook, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. It's about a six and a half hour dish. Like it's a long recipe. So what we're doing is because of our, uh, of our HEB, our local HEB, we sell a lot of different Instapots, Instant Pots, and you can get a different, different. there's all kinds. I'm using the Express Pot. Uh, it makes it so much easier because we're going to apply pressure to this fantastic long braised dish and shorten the cooking time by more than uh, three quarters of that time. So it takes about an hour and a half in total, so longer than the class, but don't worry. We're gonna show you how to do it. We'll let the pressure cooker take care of itself. So the beef bourguignon, really, really delicious. Palms aligo, aligo, palms aligo. Potato aligo, aligo potatoes. Uh, delicious mashed potato, just imagine. We're gonna add cream, we're gonna add butter, and then we're gonna add cheese, copious amounts of cheese, so much so that when you see me folding it later, you're gonna think it looks like fondue. Uh, there's that much cheese in it. Now the cheese we're using is a Gruyere and a mozzarella. Uh, word has it that the cheese they use to make the palms aligo in France, uh, you can't get in the United States. It's a name, bajur, I would just butcher it, so I'm just gonna say, we're gonna use Gruyere, which is nice, nice and nutty. And we're gonna also add a little mozzarella for the meltability. We don't want something that's too overpowering. Um, another great cheese, because we are in Texas, um, those of you that aren't are watching in Texas, queso Oaxaca. Is another great cheese. Again, nice and mild flavor, really melts well, so that's a great one if you want to use that in place of mozzarella, fantastic. Um, we're gonna show you that, really, really simple. Balsamic caramelized shallots, again, this, this is all about richness, it's all about kind of balancing flavors, and we want to push and pull the pal a little bit, so the uh, caramelized shallots, a little balsamic vinegar, a little acid, a little sweetness, really, really simple. We're doing that in the air fryer, again, it's all about convenience, making it simple. Balsamic caramelized shallots, it's gonna all tie together. And the last thing, but certainly not the least thing, is the milk chocolate and sea salt cremeau. So that is a uh, delicious dish. Great dessert, way to wrap it up. So now, what does cremeau mean? So cremeau, this is where I love, like where French and Italian words can make food sound so much sexier than they are. So in our, in our English tongue, uh, cremeau means creamy. So if I said milk chocolate, sea salt, creamy, you'd be like, creamy what, Scott? Creamy. Creamy pudding, creamy ice cream, creamy, what is it, like fondue? Like, what is it? But in French, the cremeau is just milk chocolate cremeau. So it's basically like a pudding or a style of pudding. But just imagine, like, you kind of understand, everybody has that understanding of, like, the palate of what it feels like to have, like, chocolate mousse. Kind of light, rich, but not super dense. Well, this is, like, the cousin to chocolate mousse. It's a lot creamier. It's more on the wor world of, like, kind of ganache. It's just real rich. It's real delicious, and I'm going to show you a great 
great way to uh, make a head and then keep it. And then I'm going to show you how to double the recipe because I promise you you're going to want to double this recipe. We're going to get right into it. So we're going to start with the Instant Pot. Set it to your saute setting because like everything, uh, this is a braised dish. We start with sauteing, if I can get to it, the express pot. All right, here we go. We're sauteing. I'm letting that go. Sauteing is happening. All right, this is going to get hot. Now, I want to show you as we go to the palms, I go, I'm going to be all over the place. I'm going to be sprinting tonight. We have a, I've got a potato. So my potatoes, I want to make sure they have plenty of time to cook. When you're making the potatoes, now it says dice the potatoes, peel the potatoes, dice the potatoes. I didn't want to show you how to peel and dice potato. I feel like everybody kind of knows how to do that. Uh, do it your way. The one tip I would give you when making any good mashed potato is make sure, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here, make sure that all your potatoes are diced around the same size. Reason being is because you want them to all cook evenly. So if I have a bunch of mismatched potatoes, uh, it is very possible to overcook a mashed potato and it can be a little watery. So I like to make sure they're all the same size, they're all uniform, and that way, uh, they'll all cook at the same time because if I have one that's a little bit bigger or there's like 10 pieces that are a little bigger, some a little smaller, by the time the small ones are done and you go to poke the bigger ones, they're going to be like, there's too much give. If you try to mash all that up in our fabulous kitchen and table ricer, you're going to have like a really, just kind of, it's not going to be as creamy as a texture. And when you're making the palms, you want to have the creamy texture, which is where... You don't want any lumps is what I'm hearing. No, no lumps. lumps. No lumps. Now, if you mm -hmm. like lumps, there's just nothing against skin on mashed potatoes or lumpy mashed potatoes, totally fine. It's just for the potato aligo or the palm aligo, you want to make sure you want it smooth, which is why you want to use your fancy kitchen and table ricer. You can pick up at your local HEB GM department. Uh, I believe if you're on Facebook, you can shoppable right down here in that corner. Um, but yes, it's a fantastic ricer. It's going to give you that creamy texture that we're looking for. And that way, when we add the cheese, chef, it's just going to be like so smooth, are we creamy. using a less, so like a more starchy, less waxy potato? What potato are you using? I'm going to use a, I'm going to use a Yukon Gold. Okay. You could use a russet. I like a gold potato for this. It just it works a little better. Um, but to flavor the Palms Alley Go, we're going to heat up some cream. This of is course. heavy cream. I don't waste time with milk or half and half when it comes to potatoes. When you just I go right for the whole I Googled whole this earlier. Yes. Robichon potatoes also came up. They're almost yes. identical it's with the exception of the so cheese. so much butter. Yeah. So much butter. Is that like a pound of butter? That was six ounces of butter. Now, okay. it's two and a half pounds, or basically two pounds of potatoes. Um, a typical bag, or big bags of potatoes are around five pounds. So it's about half a bag. Um, this will use a little more, if you have to, just add a little more cream if you want to. But I don't think you'll need it on this one. If you're using two to two and a half pounds of potatoes, you'll be fine because we are gonna fold in an <laughs> excessive amount of cheese into this and the fat and how it all melts is gonna be great. So a little bit of butter, a little bit of cream and to flavor this now, you can, Charlotte, flavor this with things like if you wanna add garlic to it, if you wanna add shallots to it, I sometimes do that as well. Uh, for my regular mashed potatoes, I use, think of the cream and butter mixture as like a tea. So anything you add to this cream mixture in the butter, It'll just, you're just going to infuse it with flavor, which then will add to our potatoes, which will be more delicious. So if you want to throw roasted garlic in this, you can. I don't want to completely overwhelm the cheese. So we have the Gruyere cheese, a little nutty, a little sharp. We have the mozzarella, super creamy. I don't want to go crazy, so I'm adding a little thyme, about five sprigs or just one little head of it. Uh, I'm going to let it melt, so it'll kind of infuse the cream with this beautiful herb. I'll finish it with some chives. There's your aromatic. But if you wanted to, go nuts. You can add jalapenos. You can add... You roasted garlic, you can add anything you want to this. Um, always, whenever you're putting cream on the stove, make sure you keep it a low temp. Charlotte is going to watch my cream I am. on the stove. She's going to dive over here. She's not going to dive over here, but we'll, uh, she's going to watch it. I keep that. it at a low heat. You don't have to go crazy on this um, as you're doing it. All right, so let me see if this is hot. Yep, I'm sticking my hand in here. My mom would be very, very upset. Uh, all right, so it's hot enough. So for the beef bourguignon, let's get the ingredients out here. So the classic dish done in layers, and that's exactly how we're going to do ours, in layers. So if you don't like mushrooms, you can omit the mushrooms. If you like certain vegetables better, you can always add those in there. Um, I'm using the very classic mirepoix. Uh, also, Charlotte will be very excited because I didn't add garlic to this. Now, I was in a rush when I was kind of creating this recipe, kind of doing it all, that I just, normally I would always add garlic instinctively, but I didn't add the garlic, and it was actually really, really good. So if you want to add garlic, my ratio would be a couple cloves crushed and mashed or zested or just chopped really fine and then add them to that while you're sauteing your mirepoix. Um, in the bottom of the pot, a little bit of oil. Again, we're on the saute function here. And then we're going to switch to the a little bit of oil. You can see from our sky cam here. 
a little bit of oil and the bacon goes in first. So we're going to layer. This is a layered dish. So it starts with the bacon. Once that kind of renders down, once it gets a little bit crisky, we're going to remove crisky. Is that a word? Rendered. You better, Wiki you better Wikipedia that, Charlotte. That may not be a word. So let's when try you the say word layered, crispy. let's talk about layered really quick. So let's talk you're about layering it. the flavors. So each technique and each step of this recipe is going to add to this, yep. like to the flavor, right? So absolutely. So it encompasses. So we're going to caramelize the bacon. Got it. That's going to add a layer of flavor. We're going to remove the bacon once it's rendered a little bit of fat, once it's nice and crispy or to your liking. We're going to pull it out, put a little bowl here. We're going to add our meat. That's going to go next. Salt and pepper is going to go on the meat. Every stage, we're going to like layer this with flavor, meaning we're going to season it with salt and pepper. So the steak gets seasoned, salt and pepper. It's a little bit of that bacon rendered bacon fat. That's going to cook off. It's going to release some of its juices again, adding more flavor to that pot. It's not going anywhere. We're not pouring it out. Everything's staying in. And then the vegetables, we're going to add a little salt and pepper to them. Those are going to go in. We're going to add a little flour to thicken the sauce. And then everything just gets poured back in, and then it gets braised. And that's it. So it's really, really simple. Now, for the I got the bacon sauteing. I want to show you this real fast. I'm going to put this back over here out of the way. We're going to get this in a second. I want to show you leeks. So leeks are one of my most favorite ingredients. And if you go to your local HEB, as I tear through my refrigerator here, if you go to your local HEB, I'm going to turn that off because it's nice and hot now. Uh, if you go to local HEB, these are, uh, these are just the regular leeks. Uh, the organic leeks can come some, sometimes be a little bigger. Sometimes, I'm choking up my words. I'd like to buy a vowel, please. Uh, the leeks are a little bigger. I want to show you how to use them, though, because they are so good. I'm not going to wash these, but I'll just kind of take you through uh, a standard leek. So we have this little, obviously, the top part, the leaves. You can see how, like many onions, they're layered, right? They've got this layered look inside. So to use a leek, I kind of tend to cut it right where it's showing me, like where the zipper's coming down. Like that's where it's showing me, like, zipper on a shirt. Don't go crazy. Your zipper on a shirt's coming down. We're, like, zipping the shirt down. That shows me exactly where I need to cut this. I'm going to cut that right there. I'm going to cut just the tip of the end off, just that root stem, mud part. Now, compost these, use them for stocks. The top is really, really flavorful, thrown in some stocks or roasted. Uh, and then cut it in half. So leeks are very, very sandy, so you're going to want to wash them. They get very, very dirty. And they usually get it trapped between these layers here, if you can see that. Rob, I'm like fanning it out like a little notebook. Uh, if the top part is a little bit dirty, I just remove the top. Or however many layers, if it looks a little damaged or whatever, just peel off a couple layers and chop those. How I'm doing them in the beef bourguignon tonight is just, I'm taking them like this, and I'm going to cut them into little half moons. So it's just a quick little dice here. Just half moons, nice and thin. It doesn't be too thin. You don't have to go crazy. You just kind of, you know, just a little, a little chop on these bad boys. And that is it. So then I'll do the same thing to the other one, and that is a leek, and that's what's going inside of that. But I want to make sure, like, leeks are great. I love leeks. Put those are my composter here. I love leeks in... Uh, soups, obviously, I love them in uh, dishes where I make quinoa, I'll saute, because leeks have like a, there's something about it, it's just a softer flavor. It's not quite as like red onion, yellow onion, white onion, kind of in your face. Well, they're part of the it's allium a little bit more, family, and they, yeah. so they're related to the garlic and the onion and the chive, right? But they have more of a, in my mind, it's like a gar garlic and a chive had a baby, oh, and that's go. like... The yeah. flavor that I get. So you get a little bit of that like nice onion flavor, but also a garlicky it. note. Uh, the bacon I'm using was the center cut HB bacon. I, need, I, do it, I did it so fast, I didn't even tell you guys. Uh, what also was really good, if you can find your local HEB, the pit master bacon. It's thicker, it's a, hard, it's a little more smoke flavor to it, a little more salty. It's really, really good. So ever, whenever I can find this, I always tend to go with this one. But I'm just using the regular old HEB center cut, which is this guy right over here. That's, That's like just cut. enough bacon. I love that. It's perfect. It's yeah, this will make size. a double. But this whole slab, cut into half this way and then diced, will make a double double pot of that. So we're using about a pound of the uh, stew meat. It's fairly simple. All right. So our potatoes are boiling. I'm gonna go check these again. This is a. We're gonna be running back and forth while that's all sauteing. I have my little poker, a little poker stick. So we're getting close. Those are are you using pretty... a cake tester, chef? Is that a cake I... tester? <laughs> That's it's my little super chef of you. It's very, uh, otherwise, I would say just use one of these guys. Just pick, pick one up, just kind of do it. Now, again, you don't want to overcook the potatoes. So you can see how that one, like, it kind of went in, but it's not quite, like, super soft. Can you a overcook a potato and overboil, yes. like, waterlog it? What do you do? Can you fix that? Just let them steam out, like, rest You can let it bit? steam out. Yeah, maybe if you, if you get them a two waterlog where they're just, like, when you, when you go to check, hey, life happens. Yeah. It happens to the best of us. If that were to happen, just maybe once you rice them, 
just kind of saute them in a, in a pan dry a little bit. Just kind of okay. let them dry a little bit. You'll notice some of the steam will, will come off the potatoes. But yeah, it is, it's easy to overcook a potato and people don't realize it, but yeah, potatoes are really, really good when they're just tender enough to where you can mash them and you're not overcooked so you're waterlogging them because we want all the potato flavor to be in the cream and in the cheese, which is a ridiculous amount of cheese. And I can't wait for you to see the mound of cheese that you're folding and then it just, the potato just goes, give me it. And it just goes and sucks it all in, just like that. Um, we are gonna start the cream while well, this is sauteing. So uh, every Instant Pot's different. This Instant Pot is a six quart Instant Pot. Uh, we sell about nine to 10 different Instant Pots at HEB. So if you're using like a nine quart in one of the big daddies, uh, you can either double the recipe or just know add a little more liquid to it because the surface area is a little more obviously broad. So uh, what I've encountered a lot when I use the nine quart for stuff that was meant for a smaller one because not all are all the same. I would say it works best in the six quart but you can also use it in the nine core because I tested it, but I kept getting the little code coming up saying food burn and it just shuts it off. It wasn't actually burning, but it senses when there's not enough liquid, so it'll say that. So you can make it easier on yourself. I'm gonna turn the potatoes off, Charlotte. Okay. And I gotta get this cream going for my right. uh, dessert. So I'm gonna get my half and half and okay. my heavy cream. It's a cup of so, each. So I was Googling, that's right. Yeah. I Googled the, the cheese for the palms a la go. It's like a Vergier. Uh, yeah, and then they also use like Cantal cheese. Yes. Um, which is, has been described as the French cheddar. Really? Yeah, so um, French cheddar. when it's so young. So it's slightly salty. Yeah, so when it's young, it kind of has that, they say as a nutty flavor, um, yeah. buttery, sort of like that mozzarella you were talking about. Don't but as that. it ages, it's very similar to sharp cheddar. I told you. Chef Charlotte would keep me on task and she would she would make sure that I was we were fact checking everything that happens because we want to make sure we give job. you the accurate information. All right, going in for I'm the like dessert. Alton Brown right now. The, <laughs> the dessert starts with one cup, half and half, one cup heavy cream. I know that seems like a lot, but I promise you you don't want anything else, nothing less than that. I'm gonna get it going. Now, uh, two two modifications on this if you want. Keep this very, very low. Again, that's just the uh, cream. I'm gonna use a teaspoon of salt for this because we are calling it a sea salt milk chocolate cremeau. So I'm going to use a teaspoon of the sea salt or you can use kosher salt if you want sea salt. But if you if you love the aesthetic of things, especially desserts, to have something on top, it's great to use flake salt. So you can use that flake oh, yeah. salt. It's really nice. We sell it actually with a couple different varieties. Um, back off on the salt for the cream and the, and the mixture by a half a teaspoon. So about a half teaspoon just to flavor and get everything going and then finish with about a teaspoon or so, just kind of sprinkle it over the tops of the cremos when they're done. And that way you'll have kind of the same thing. All right, so here is, so every Instant Pot's a little bit different. So you can see here, I got my bacon going. Now you can see, I don't know if Rob, you can see from that camera angle, the sky cam, there's a little bit, I have a little bit of browning going on on the bottom. So that browning is some of that bacon kind of just cooking in. I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna add my meat in a second. So you see, I'm just taking it out. Again, we're layering flavor. My potatoes, I can feel the potatoes are ready. They're, they're like, I need to get out of the bath. I'm gonna get waterlogged. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna check on my potatoes. The bacon, remember this is all gonna go back in. I love beef bourguignon. This is honestly though, with the potatoes and the- uh, and pretty your, rich. Uh, it's pretty rich. I'm not gonna lie to you. All right, the meat. So we're using a, what I also love about our HEB, uh, about HEB, um, the millions of things we all love about HEB. Uh, the fact that I'm using the grass-fed beef and it's the beef for stew and it's about a pound in these packages. I don't have to dice this. I don't have to chop it up. It's really, really easy. If that. you wanted to, you absolutely could use a different cut of meat if you want to chop it up and just do it. Any, any stew meat or cut would be great. So anything you have, if you've got leftover meat you want to throw in there. I wouldn't use filet for this application just because, you know, filet is one of those tender cuts and we don't want to we don't want to cook it for or pressure cook it for any long period of time all right the meat's going to go in i'm going to hit it with some salt and pepper again every flavor we got to layer this i love the pepper that little hit of pepper on there it may seem like a lot of salt and you're not wrong i like to hit no, things with a good amount of salt i think you're doing okay when you're doing a stew dish like especially at this at this step you're absolutely right you Build can't a lot of flavor you, you know? can't go back you right can't. you can't go back and I also really love this because even though we are in July, yep. we're making a braised dish without turning on our oven yes. for six hours. Exactly. I think this is great. So you're like, you don't have to like- Doesn't take, yep. Crank the AC or anything like that. It's pretty, it's pretty clever. 
if you want to see, I, I think if I'm remembering it right, Julia Child's recipe for beef bourguignon is literally like a three page recipe and it just goes on forever. And it's all about explaining the layers of like, you do the, do you do the, the bacon, then the meat, then you add your herbs and all, all this stuff. So it just builds this layer. All right, to that, I've already had the salt. So uh, Charlotte and I talked about, you know, we should whisk some whipped cream at the end because people like watching you punish yourself and whisk uh, live whipped cream in a matter of minutes. But uh, we're gonna save that because I got inspired for the cremo to top this all off. We have, a, I was walking past one of our things and like everybody should do when you walk in an H-E-B or we're just walking through our test kitchens here. I'm like, you know, we have some marshmallows. Maybe I'll go a little unconventional. So I preheated an oven to 350. I, uh, I have a Pyrex dish and I'm gonna spray the Pyrex dish. I'm gonna add half the marshmallows to this. I'm gonna bake the marshmallows for about 10 minutes so they get really puffed up and they're gonna to start to get just a slight bit of brown on top. I'm gonna to take them out, let them rest for just a second, and I'm gonna scoop this roasted marshmallow fluff on top of the cremo. What? What? I lost my mind, Hack. but you know what? This is it. where, this are those things that like, we just have to kind of, we have to kind of, they've gotta be done. All right, I'm gonna drain the potatoes. I'm gonna take my towels. You know what else you could do is you could sprinkle yeah. some crushed up graham cracker and you could have a s'mores you could. creamy. If you have never, I'll just say this, if you have never uh, roasted marshmallows in your oven, you are missing out because they get so beautiful and puffy. Just imagine, I know everybody's had them like on the campfire, or if you have a, a gas range, I'm really jealous, but if you have a gas range, you can do the whole, you know, toast your marshmallows over the top. But honestly, it is so delicious roasted because it's just nothing but flavor. I'm gonna put our drained potatoes there. So I'm gonna let these steam for a second. So those are nice and hot. I'll put them back in the pan in a minute. The cream is pretty much ready to go. It's reduced the butter, the thyme. Uh, what I forgot to tell you guys to do was season this really well with salt because this is where the seasoning is gonna come from. Now we are gonna get some salt from the cheese. So you just wanna season this. I was gonna use a crazy percentage, but percentages don't So wait, I have a question, <laughs> chef. So this yes. is very unlike, this is, I'm, 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 I'm dumbfounded. Yeah. Did you not salt your potato water? I did. You did, okay, because I was say it's very un unlike you to not salt your boiling I, I did, just okay. a little bit, because okay. I found, and I've made so many mashed potatoes over the years, and I find like, I was always taught that potatoes, you put them in cold water, you cut them, and then you put them in there, and you don't put any salt in them, but over the years, I've realized that potatoes are so different now, Yeah. and they, they're, they don't, you're not gonna hurt them adding the salt to it okay. now. It used to be like, you couldn't cook your beans with any salt, like all that yeah. kind of stuff. It was very like, no, it'll tighten them up. Uh, I still don't put salt in my pasta dough. I think we talked about that, right? Cause I feel like it toughens it. That's the only thing we I don't put salt that. in is pasta dough. Cause you're supposed to salt your pasta water like the sea. Like, like the ocean. The sea, the ocean. Yes. All right, this is kind of getting a little colored here. How's my meat looking over there on the sky cam, Okay, Rob? let me look. Can you see it? Did that work? That transition uh, It's worked? doing well. It's doing well. It's still going. So again, yeah. we're just going to keep, this is just going to keep kind of sauteing. My, uh, for whatever reason, this saute function is a little less you know, strong than the, uh, you know, and that's It's okay. really instant pot. So like the saute function, like it just takes a little bit longer for uh, my experience for it to get up yeah. to temperature, right? And so when you put something cold into it. Also, this one, did you have trouble with this one? The one that's like, it has the knob. So I'm like, I want to add more time to it. I'm like, I don't know. Nah, that's probably just you. Probably, it's probably me. That's, that's pretty much part of the course. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, uh, we're about 25 minutes in. I'm gonna start the shallots. So the shallots. Now, I have not been able to find shallots. I don't know if you have been able to find shallots, but it's hard to find them. So if it's hard to find them, don't worry about it because we're gonna use red onions instead. I'm just checking on all this stuff. I'm just making sure everything is, is flowing, flowing the way it needs to. Okay, and so that cream, really quick, we have a question. The yes. cream on the stove, is yes. it at like a simmer or a medium, medium? Yes, it is at a very, very low simmer. I don't wanna go crazy and bring okay. this to a boil. Once it's kind of like doing little bubbles, I'll shut it off because I'm gonna whisk the egg yolks and I've actually gotten the eggs to room temperature. So for the last hour, I've let them sit out because it'll help me temper the eggs a little easier and also a little bit faster versus like really cold egg yolks trying to temper into the cream. You may have to work a little bit harder at it. I don't want these to curdle. So that's my, my one pro tip. That's a great question. So that's almost at, a, almost at a bubble. All right, so the shallots. So I couldn't find shallots. I had some earlier. I caramelized those off, but I couldn't find any more. So I'm going to do a red onion. I'll show you how I'm going to do these. So the caramelized shallots, again, we're just trying to add extra flavor to everything going on. So the beef bourguignon is really, really rich, right? It's real rich. 
It's got a lot going on. The mashed potatoes, super, super duper rich. So we're going to add a little bit of this balsamic caramelized sh shallot, red onion, because we want to add a little bit of acid kick to it. So a little vinegar in there and a little bit of the sweetness, which will help it caramelize, is really, really yummy. Sometimes the skin on red onions is very, very difficult and refuses to play with me. But we coax it out anyway. All right, so what I'm going to do, just like a shallot, what I would do is kind of cut into these like pieces. So I kind of leave the, uh, leave the stem root intact a little bit if you wanted to, like this. I cut it off of this one because I'm just trying to show you guys the uh, way. But just kind of cut into little squares like that. Oh, so you're being, it's not like, it's not super fine. Nope, it's, it's just kind of big okay. chunks. So um, that will render down and caramelize into this beautiful shallot mess. I have a question for you, yes. Chef. I want to go back to the potatoes for a second because somebody yep. brought up a really cool point. Yeah. Have you ever thought about baking a potato versus boiling it? And that question was from Josh. Josh, yes, you can. Actually, the, the way I like to do, it's a great point, Josh. The way I like to do, when I do palms, for whatever reason, you can roast them, but I like to just boil them. That's just kind of how I've always done it. It's easier, and I can check on them. Uh, if you want a really, really great potato, you can wash them really, really well. You can either kind of peel them just a little bit or the Yukon Golds. You can roast them, like bake them in an oven, and then take them out when they're nice and soft, break them apart, let them cool, and then you can fry them and they're unbelievable fried like that because they're nice and soft and pillowy and you can fry them or you can throw them under the broiler with a lot of olive oil, salt and pepper. Once they're crisp. baked, you get a really, really crispy. Oh yeah. Oh. All right, so I'm gonna take, all right, so the meat's coming out. Here we go. Okay. I'm telling you, this is just, it's layers, layers at a time. The meat's coming out. Now your Instapot may be a lot more aggressive and hotter than my Instapot. So yours may be doing this a little bit faster than mine is. All right, now at this point, see all that good juice in there? I still got a couple pieces of bacon, that's okay. I'm going to add our mirepoix. So the mirepoix, classically, celery, carrot, onion, right? The, yes. Uh, the flavor in this is really, really good. I'm actually going to leave out the mushrooms this time. Why? What? Just because. Should I? No. All right. <laughs> Two people are saying yes. One person said yes. One person said no. All right. Carrot, celery, onion. I'll add the mushrooms. I'll do it. I'll yeah, do then it for it's you. Not, then, then you can't even call it. White onion. Beef bourguignon. Call it what? Am I going to be in trouble for that? Calling it, I can't call it beef organo with the mushrooms. All right, yeah. leeks, celery, carrot, onion, all go in. Again, another pinch of salt and pepper. Just layering this bad boy up. We'll do one more. Because at the end, Charlotte's right. You don't want to have to be like, oh, let me just add a bunch more salt to this. We are going to add some burgundy wine. We're going to add some beef stock. So if they're not super, super aggressively seasoned, both the wine, which I know I don't drink salty wine, much as I love salt. Maybe that's what I should invent, salty wine. Did I just, did I just invent something? I think that's cooking wine. I think the wine that you would buy, Salty like, wine? They add salt to it, yeah. I don't know. I'd kind of like to see the, uh, the salty wine. All right, for the potatoes here, I'm going to take out my thyme. Now, whatever thyme has come off in the pan, leave it in there. That's what we want. We want that left in there, all that good flavor. Our cream is ready. The potatoes are going to go back into the pot here. I've let them dry out just a second. Now, because they're a little bit wet, so you see I've got a little bit of wetness, I'm actually going to do a little, uh, oh, no, I'm not. Watch this. Watch this, Charlotte. Oh, let's see. Show me, show me. Wait, I forgot the most important step I'm of the Alago potato. I'm from Missouri, show me state. You know what that was? It's the ricing of the potato. So i got to rice the potato. So while that's going. But let me do this first. I'm telling you, there's a lot of irons in the fire right now. All right, doing on great, these, boss. On these, what's that? You're doing great, boss. On this, a little salt and pepper, a little bit of sugar. Not a lot, but you need a, about a teaspoon of sugar. Why? Because I want the shallots to caramelize really, really nicely, and I want to have that sugar is going to kind of help them out. I'm not going to, I don't want to make these like sugar shallots, but about a teaspoon of sugar is going to help facilitate some of that browning here. All right. Those are going to go in, and I use about a quarter cup of olive oil. Okay. I love olive oil. I do too. What olive oil are you using? Look at that. What a beautiful drizzle. I'm using the Octavia Organic. Yeah, that's on brand for you. <laughs> I just happened to grab it. I mean, I, I was also going to just, you know, grab, grab the organic one anyway, but I was just figured I would just grab that one as well. Did you tell uh, me that you had a first edition Julia Child's The Art of French? I have, thing? no. Uh, my mother-in-law found one that was like printed. It was one of the, like, it was like that, 12th edition. Okay. So it's like one of the, it's one of the older ones. It was like published in the 19, maybe the early 1970s, but it's a cool one. It's definitely old. It's somebody, somebody had used it and it was, it was well, well worn. And I love looking through there. Some of those recipes now are just, we don't have, some people don't have the time to do. 
And so it's a little hard to kind of, you know, do that. But every once in a while, if you can update a classic and do something like that, it's great. Um, you'll notice in the recipe on the balsamic caramelized shallots, it does say dice the time. For this application, because we're doing it live and you're here, uh, I want to show you how pretty it looks with just the fresh, the fresh thyme leaves just picked off. I'm still going to use about a teaspoon of them. I'm telling you, fresh thyme and onions, if you have not discovered fresh thyme and onions, I want to discover it for you right now. It is absolutely amazing. All right, I got the olive oil, a little balsamic again, a little sweetness. So I'm using the uh, aged balsamic vinegar. So Ooh, this is the you're balsamic fancy. vinegar. Show the, us. Uh, just sweet. You want it sweet. I want a little sweetness. You can find that if you're watching Facebook right down here in the corner. Um, did it work? Did it pop up? Was it that like, super awesome? It's such a great item. It's for the, uh, you can just drizzle it straight on the salads, on tomatoes. So good. It's good stuff. Because I'm a dishwasher in my own right, been doing it for a lot of years, uh, I'm gonna make it easy on myself. I've got this Texas Tough Foil, and though my air fryer has a little basket with which to fry in, I don't wanna have to clean it out because that's also called laziness, also called uh, just being kind of intuitive about what you know you're going to have to clean afterwards. So you're being resourceful. I am, I'm being a good steward of my own time. All right, all the goodness goes inside that foil. This is going to go in our air fryer. It's all working out perfectly. Then we're going to get our potatoes going. In it goes, and you can see that rob right up you top here. You have all the gadgets today. I'm telling you, go to your HEB, check out all the fantastic gadgets. There you go. This one's a little more. Uh, all right, I'm going to go chicken. I'm going to hit play, play, hit play, and play, <laughs> and play. He's 15, trying here we go. to set the time 15, on the VCR. Wait, wait do I got to start over again? Wait, off, on. I'm going to set the time. Nope. <laughs> I'll get it right. Here we go. Wait, I got it. Ah, I found you. I knew, you know, your being here gives me the confidence to know that I can push through any obstacle like the one the air fryer creates for me. All right, so the potatoes. Those are frying. We're going to get our potatoes. The cremo is certainly last but not least. All right, I'm going to put a little spoonful of my potatoes in here. I love, if you guys have not discovered the kitchen and table ricer, I cannot wait for you to discover it because it's awesome. And because of what? Make it rain. Look There's at that. something so satisfying so about watching good. you do that. I, I love it. Uh, uh, we used to have, I don't know, Charlotte, when you worked uh, in, in restaurants, if they had the giant ricer, they put it over a big thing. Yeah. And you'd take turns, like, running. <laughs> People, would, you'd be like, you have to be like, and it just would, like, spin this, like, these, like, little spindles of awesomeness around. Yeah, but those potatoes are hot like napalm. They are. They are really hot. So look at that. Come on. This is how you get really, really creamy potatoes is putting them through the ricer. So like, by the way, uh, it may seem like it's, yes, it's mid-July, but by the time you blink, it's going to be the holidays and you want to up your potato game for the holidays, you get yourself a kitchen and table ricer and I guarantee you people are going to be like, what am I eating? What is this? Ready? Oh, it's a good workout. Bam. Also a great bicep workout. It's a great way to get the kids involved. And these that are kind of mushed, I don't mind those going in. All right, almost there. You know what I should have done, Charlotte? I probably could have used a smaller spoon for this application. Nah, but you're doing great. You're difficult, being it's difficult to kind of my brand, got. so. I have to wash your dishes later, so I appreciate using what using was around. Whatever, yep. Using the, uh, the same tools for the same. Yep. Uh, I really cannot wait for you to see this, though, because it really is uh, awesome how much butter You know what? I'm putting this as the equivalent of, like, when you go to a restaurant and either they cook your pasta in a wheel of cheese yep. or... They walk over and they're like, here is this melty cheese and now we're going to scrape it onto your plate. That's what I feel like is oh, about yeah. to happen. Like the restaurants that do raclette, the raclette cheese, that's like yeah. a cheese that they, they put on a big, like under a broiler. Yeah. And they just scrape it off onto yeah. like bread. Also very delicious. It's All right, delicious. I'm just gonna kind of scoop these off. And All right, here we go. Last little. My two favorite things, potatoes and cheese. Yeah, if you had a favorite, if I, if I had to guess your favorite food, it's probably French fries, right? Is that still the same? Nailed it. That's it. French fries. And yep. alongside a little glass of Veuve Clique. Yep. Veuve, Veuve Clique. Champagne. Yep. Sparkling Told wine. You. All right. These guys are going away. I did it. We did those. Those are there. I'm going to get out my spatula. These are going to go in. I'm going to pull this up front here. I'm going to add the cream mixture. Look at all that. It's reduced. Look how thick that is. Come on. The smell of butter and everything else. 
so good. All right, now these are going to set over medium heat here. Nope, low heat. We'll go low heat. I forget this is 55,000 BTU strong, our ovens here. All right, how's our, uh, you know, it's slow. Tonight's a little slow. It's a little slow with these, uh, with the caramelization here. All right. So the vegetables are going to get nice and caramelized. Now imagine they were nice and caramelized like they are. And you're like, oh my gosh, those are so caramelized. They look beautiful. Don't they look, don't they look really nice? We're going to throw in our mushrooms. We're going to add the flour, a third cup of flour. This is where our roux base comes in. Now, if you are gluten free, I will tell you, you can use cornstarch. The texture is going to be a little bit different. It'll be a little more of that kind of gelatinous kind of mix versus like just a kind of a smoother, I would say like kind of thicker. Could you just cook it down almost like a pot roast? You type could. Situation? Yeah, you could also cook it down. You could, okay. if you want to cook it a little longer, you could. You could just cook it down a little longer. You could set the, I think, I believe the stew meat timer on this is about 35 minutes. You could just up it to about 40 minutes or 45 minutes and let it cook a little bit longer. So the step that you just did, adding the flour. Adding the flour. Is the French culinary term why. is called songer. Songer. Songer, where you songer. That's to a good term. sprinkle. It's a great term. To sprinkle the flour. Yep, I like it. Since you like French culinary terms and everything. I like, you know, that just sounds fancier. You know, it's like cream. It's like, I'm going to make you, I'm going to make you a, you know, milk chocolate cream. Cream what, Scott? Creamy. That no, sentence. it's creamy. Cream, creamy. Just milk chocolate creamy. <laughs> I can't, just, it's just a milk chocolate creamy and you're going to love it. Don't worry about it. Milk chocolate creamy. All right, you see my potatoes here? Those look like velvet potatoes and so, I can't oh, just stand you wait. it over here. This is where it's going to get fun. Get my workout in today. So look how much... Man. They've absorbed all that. Now this is where, get ready, because it's all going in. The whole package, now it calls for six ounces, but is there's that just the some thin days. the shred or the? This is the thin shred. There's just some days that you have to live more dangerously than others. Three and cups then, Gruyere, look at all Gruyere. that cheese. Look at that, look at that cheese up top. All right, that's browning off. So two things, while I'm, while I'm doing all this to get the potatoes done, and then I'll move on to the finish the stew and the cremo here. Look at uh, those forearms, man. <laughs> I've been doing this for a while, right? <laughs> uh, in rehearsal, I had a much smaller Dutch oven and I realized, I said, you know what? If I put all that cheese in that small Dutch oven, I'm gonna be really working for it. So I just decided, you know what? We're just gonna upgrade the pan altogether. So we upgraded the pan completely. I wish Piper was here because then she could bring me a spoonful of those. She could Potatoes. bring you some of the. Now, just because we're doing it in the classic Aligo style doesn't mean you couldn't add fresh bacon, you could add all your bacon crumbles, all that kind of stuff. All right, here we go. What? Okay, keep going. No, I'm going to feel like I need some more it's cheese. It's almost there. Not there. Okay. Oh. Wait. What? Oh Come on. my is goodness. Is it fondue or is it potato? I don't know, but whatever it is, it's delicious and I need it. <gasps> <laughs> All right. Those are going to hang out. One They're good time. to go. One more time. Do it one more time for the people in the cheap seats. For the people seats. that just Come joined on. us. If you're just joining us. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> As it's like so much cheese. There's so much fat right now. It's like, it's just so good. Look at this. It's like yeah. all. Come on. No, All right, those are done. Cream. Okay. I got to whisk some eggs while this is going. Yeah. Okay. So why the flour now? Now you can see as this is kind of going. You see how our, it turned itself off. What happened, Charlotte? I don't know. I you're watching this. What, ha what just happened? Listen, the Instapot on for cooking classes is a source of anxiety for me, and I'm very proud of you, and I validate you. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, to reiterate, this, this is all live. There is no, uh, there's no like, hey, cut, reset that. That didn't look right. If, uh, if anything happens, we drop something. Something, you know, something doesn't turn out right. This is just live. It's just the way, the way we do it. We do it live. I've got the cream. Let me get my yolks here. All right, that's going to go. So the roux needs to cook out. So why does the roux need to cook out? Because you don't want raw flour flavor in your, in the finished product. Yeah. It's going to taste weird. So we've all been to the, and if you, uh, I've, I've grew up this way, so I understand what it feels like. The, uh, you have the, which bowl do I want to use? Let me use this guy. So during Thanksgiving, uh, a certain family member who I won't name used to make the gravy and they would add the flour with the stuff and they wouldn't cook it. And so 
when you were going to have your gravy with your turkey and you took a bite, you'd get that like, that raw flour. Just imagine just I eating raw flour, spoonful of flour. You, did you tell your wife that it's not how you do it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I won't mention, no, she knows how to do it right. She just- uh, I'm just kidding, my, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but that was, hey, you know what? That was a, well played, Charlotte, well played. All right, we're gonna take the yolks out of these guys. Again, these are completely at room temperature. Fantastically ready eggs. Again, it's gonna make this tempering process a lot easier, but I gotta have to whip some serious eggs right now. Whip the eggs. Solid technique it's there. It's totally okay if a little bit of white gets in with this. It's not gonna kill it. We're not making meringue, so it's not gonna be like, uh oh, you've ruined it, there's a little bit of white in there. Not like that. I think the Instant Pot's back up and running. I'm hearing some sauteing going on. That's a good thing. I'm telling you, this, whatever happens live is just what happens live, right? All right. Eggs are going in. You want to crack them fresh. I didn't want to let these sit here. Last one. That whole egg's going in that one. All right. Compost your eggshells. Here's where we go. Third cup sugar a little bit of our vanilla extract. That is all that goes in this. And I'm gonna whip this to death with my whisk. My potatoes are done. I've got 16 minutes left on that. This is doing what this is doing. So I wanna show you what ribbons look like. So I'm gonna whisk this into ribbons because I want you to have a visual cue when you were Whisking something ever in the future, you can go, okay, what do, what do ribbons look like? What does it mean to have ribbons? It's where you can kind of draw a figure eight because you have incorporated enough air and got the sugar going. This is where it used to be like, they teach you how to do it like this with your arms in and you just use your wrist. But I feel like you kind of got to get your body into it a little bit. This is where you can start passing off to the kids, let them all have a try at it. It should be a nice pale yellow color. And yes, I did add that whole egg fell in here, but that's all right. It's going to be fine. I have the, egg, the eggs, the yolks. The yolks, what makes it thicken is the lecithin in the eggs. So each egg yolk will emulsify about seven ounces of oil, almost a cup. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that thickening power in this. I'm going to have to check on those potatoes in a second because I'll need to season them, make sure they're good to go. The kitchen and table. Ricer is right down here. If you watch it on Facebook. How are we doing on time, Charlotte? Ooh, yeah. Now we got, we got there we go. Time. That's what I'm looking like. See, you see that? I don't know if Rob, you can see go. that. See all that, that good dark flavor in there? All that fawn that's on the bottom of the pan? That's what we want to kind of add the stock and the wine to kind of get up. So while I'm whisking this, keep going. I'm going to add a little bit of wine. Now, Charlotte. Yes, Tompkins. Do I have to add a burgundy wine? You know, it would have been really funny, and I just thought about this as I was pouring it. If I overshot the container right into there, um, what well, it is beef bourguignon. And it is so beef bourguignon. You so I'm should, using. You should use a, a wine burgundy. from that region, yes. I'm gonna stir this up. This is where you wanna take your, your spatula and you wanna really push and scrape all those lovely bits up. Again, that's all that flour, that's all that thickening power, all that good flavor, that wine kind of disappears very quickly. Bone broth, so why 9.5 ounces? It would be easier to say two cups, absolutely. However, we made it easy, and it's just one of these guys will do you. So one jar of that, 9.5 ounces, a little over a cup, that liquid goes in, I'm gonna kinda of let this get hot, but again, you wanna scrape up all the lovely bits on the bottom. Oh yeah. Because again, all that stuff on the bottom is all flavor. All right, now this goes on. What wine did you Lit put on. in there? Okay, the Beaujolais Louis Village. Jadon. Beaujolais Village. So typically the wines from that. the Burgundy region are gonna be, um, the grape is Chardonnay or Pinot Noir. So Can if you explain you were, that a little more? Yeah, explain like that. Yeah, so um, a Beaujolais is actually a um, Gamay grape, um, but it's from the region, Gamay. so it goes, yeah, Gamay. Gamay grape, okay. So it goes really well in this dish, but 
traditionally or typically the grapes grown in Burgundy are Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So any Pinot Noir would be really good in this, and the Beaujolais is a perfect, a perfect I choice. Love it. So it's a good wine. So I have a rule that we do in my house. Whenever I cook with, with wine, I typically use the cheapest stuff you can find because I don't want to cook with stuff because I love to drink wine. I don't want to cook with like, I don't want to use my really good wine to cook with, but I'm just going to reduce and obliterate and, you know, it's going to So you're saying burn off. it's wasting. You're wasting. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to waste the good wine. So typically I will use like a cheaper wine, but this one is actually like a good, it's a good, like it's, I think it's under $10 or right around $10. Yeah. And it's good enough to where, yeah, I could use it to cook with, feel yeah. good because I'm using a French Burgundy. Yeah. At the same time, also drink it. So uh, Beaujolais no comes in like, there's three different classifications. And within those class classifications, there's other classifications. But typically it's like Beaujolais, Beaujolais Nouveau, um, Beaujolais Village, and then the, the highest tier, I guess, would be yeah. Beaujolais Cru. And then within Cru, there's within some crew? more. Now, is it the same with champagne or no? Uh, so different or no? Different, different. Yes, in the sense that like it's um, it ha like it's controlled. So like it has to come from a specific region with a specific grape. Um, so yes, in okay. that regard. I mean, makes sense. I'm gonna put the spurs this a little bit. You can see I'm doing two things. I'm trying to emulsify the potatoes. I'm gonna make sure that cheese melts really, really well. For those of you just joining us, date night done right. We got the Aligo potatoes. We got the beef bourguignon going. I got the pressure cooker on that one. That is going. I got the cremo working right now. The caramelized shallots in the oven. And I mean the air fryer. It oven. smells amazing in here. It's smelling pretty good. All right, so I'm going to show you this. My cream is ready to go. It's got that skin on there. I'm going to shake it. It'll just kind of absorb back in there. I want to show you this when I talk about ribbon phase what it means. So whenever you see like there's a lot of pastry chefs or pastry books that say ribbon cook mix it to the ribbon stage. Ribbon stage is basically so you can draw a figure eight. See nice. there's a ribbon. You can kind of see it. That's where the ribbon is. So that's the ribbon stage and that's where we're we're good. We are good on that. So a little bit of a little bit of oh, cream look again. At you. You're going wild. You're just I'm going pour wild it in because there. I already tempered my eggs, right? By having them at room temperature. So they're already slightly tempered, so I don't have to be as delicate with it. Because again, they're at room temperature. And if I'm adding hot cream to it, I can add it a little bit faster. Yeah. So I just kind of feel the bowl. The bowl feels warm right now. And add a little bit more. Obviously, don't burn yourself. A little bit more. And that should probably be the next addition to where, okay, got a little hotter on my hand here. But I'm feeling like that's going to be good enough for me to be able to toss this back in here. And it is. So scrape it all out. That goes back in there. And just like that, again, low heat. I'm going to set my timer. Five minutes. Here it is. Five minutes. Five minutes. Holy cow. I wish you could smell the, uh, the wine coming out of this thing. It's incredible. It's amazing. All right. Here we go. So we're going to switch over. Because of movie magic, the movie madness we do, we have one that's working and one that's done. 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 Ta -da. But it's not ready yet. It's still going. It's still got a little, a little second. We're going to give it a second. Now, for the emulsion of the cremo, you need to know that you can do it with an immersion blender. On the recipe, I, I, use, I use an immersion blender, which is basically a stick blender that kind of helps everything get emulsified. The reason why I do that is because I want you to incorporate a little bit of air, too. Here we go. Now the cheese is melting again. So those of you that just joined us, this is so beautiful. So that where you get, that's where you get the aligos. All the cheese is melting. It's like pillowy. This stuff is, this is no joke. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's so, so cheesy. All right. We're going to thicken up our cream here. Look how thick I just got. And again, I got a little bit of insurance because again, I started with room temperature eggs. That's probably hot enough to where I can start to let that guy go. I'm going to use this as a top for my potatoes. I'm so excited to show you the cremo here. Moreover, I'm excited to show you the vessel that I used in the making of my cremo. So I talked about the stick blender, emulsifying everything, getting air into it. I'm going to use a blender. You can also use a, like a KitchenAid with a whisk attachment and just whip everything together. Add the chocolate chips, 
throw this on top while it's hot and then just whip it so it'll whip a bunch of air into it and kind of emulsify and aerate at the same time. So I did it over high heat. You see how thick that is? So that's where, see how I kind of, you kind of jiggle it, it kind of just kind of stays. You like that, Rob? See it? See it on our, oh yeah, all right. So here we go. This goes over here for a second, chocolate chips. 11.5 ounce bag, why? Because it's just one bag, makes it easy. I've got it here in a container. Into the blender it goes. This is so easy, it's gonna blow your mind. So you saw we tempered the, sure, we had to temper the, we tempered the, uh, the yolks a little bit. We cooked the cream. Oh Get man. out of town. Look how beautiful that is. Thick. Something's beeping, I wonder what it is. It's my- Timer? My timer on my Instapot. On all right, your, do I have a, are right, you ready for this? Yeah. I'm gonna see if we can do this up top. We didn't plan for this in rehearsal, but here we go. Can you see it, Rob? I love it, he's winging it. Winging it. Uh, yeah. I do this at great personal risk to myself, but I, I'm gonna go slow. That's... Just okay. to be safe. Oh, it's science. This it's is magic. gonna emulsify. And it's going to, uh, I'm going to turn that off for just a second. It's going to emulsify and we're forcing a lot of air into it, which is exactly what the immersion blender is going to give you. I'm going to stir it just to make sure it's all good, but it's hot enough to where it's going to melt the chocolate pretty quickly. I'm going to start it back up again. Come on, look at that. All right. Those are cute. Done. Aren't they? So uh, pay no attention to the hideously ugly steel, uh, stainless steel container it comes in. That's why I added the, uh, the parchment paper just to kind of conceal and not let you see all the, uh, the blemishes on all the other stuff. But just to show you how great these little kitchen and table, what was the word they used? What was the pour some, some it was almost as good as borosilicon. It's probably gonna be my new favorite phrase to say. Uh, these are six ounce kitchen and table ramekins. They are dishwasher safe, they are microwave safe, and they are oven safe to 450 degrees. If you like creme brulee, we're gonna make creme brulee at some point in our virtual classes. This is a fantastic ramekin that can withstand all the tests. I have six, six ounce. Pour it in each one. Now you don't need them in this vessel. You can pour them on a sheet pan. These need to cool for at least an hour before you put them in the fridge. Cause if you pour this hot into the fridge, all that steam's gonna make everything else not so good in the fridge, not so good. Good word, right? It was very scientific, it was very technical, everything else not so good, which is what you want to avoid, the not so good. All right, here we go. Oh, it makes about perfectly six of these guys, a little more. Now I want to show you a real quick, while we're uh, in a good spot, I think, with everything, I'm going to show you a really cool way to kind of add some flair to these. Now, you want to have a thing close by, like a catcher, like this guy I'm going to use, close by, because we're going to make some designs on these. And it's basically, take your whisk, put it in. I don't know if you can see this on the top, Rob. Twist and up. So we're going to go just like that. So ready? We're going to go twist and up. Twist and up. It just kind of makes it a little design. I should not be using a blender because it's making me go a lot higher. I'll use this. Look at that. Just gives it a little wispy. I love in the it. setup, they give a little wisp. All right. That goes here, that goes out of the way. Our blender back down here. I'm telling you, Cremo, in two seconds. We're, we're basically there, folks. We're it, you've made it. Now it's time for the final. I got three minutes on the, three minutes on that. This goes into the fridge, and I can't wait to show you this. Oh, you know what we forgot to do? What? That's kind of cool. The marshmallows? Marshmallows. Okay. Oh boy, I have time. Marshmallows into our Pyrex dish. You got plenty of time, oven. boss. Quickly into the oven. We'll let those go while I'm showing you the, we got to do the blizzard test. I'm a big fan of when you have custards or puddings, you got to do the blizzard test. My timer Like the Dairy Queen blizzard up. test? Yeah, like you got to okay. be able to turn upside down, right? Yeah. This is where you'll get to know a little something about myself. Um, you want to, it makes six. You saw me make six of the cremos. Why make six? when you can double the recipe and have extra. So if you have a dinner party, people are coming over, right? You're like, oh, I'll make one. But I know myself, if I make this, three are mine. 
they're just they're earmarked, they're mine, they're done. So that means that there's now less for my guests. So uh, if I double it, I know that okay, six people are coming over. I got six, so that still leaves me six more. Selfishly, you can keep them. Uh, the great thing about this is they're made overnight. Um, the blizzard test. These little ramekins, the same exact ramekins that you saw. These are the heat proof. All you're doing, once you've cooked it, it goes in the container, it goes in the fridge, or just cools off, then goes in the fridge. And over about four, four or six hours is about right. I'll let it go overnight because it just allows everything to settle. Um, really settles. quickly, Chef. Yes. So if um, we let them cool, let it cool slightly before we put them in the fridge because we don't want them to steam and like have like condensation and stuff. Correct. Right? Got it. Okay. You don't want the condensation, you don't want all that stuff. All right, our shallots. Okay, here it is. I'm gonna use a bowl because I feel like we should use a bowl for this, Charlotte. Okay. So everything's gonna to get together. So we're doing the stew, everything's gonna to go together. Can I show you this real fast? You ready for this? Rob, you ready? Here we go. The final. I love the steam when it first, and so, also the sound that it makes when you open it. It's like you want a video game. <laughs> it's like a little, a little robot friend. All right, so this now, this beautiful braised dish, all those vegetables, all that great stuff, the thyme in there, the bay leaf. That's beautiful. More importantly, it's just delicious. All right, potatoes. We need a potatoes. So I'm gonna use a, let me use a, should I use Charlotte's multitasking tool? Uh, yes. I got a giant one. The scoop, the mega scoop. So I'm gonna take some of our potatoes. I just want you to see this. Oh my gosh, it, oh my gosh. <gasps> How far can you, I'm telling you, the cheese in this potato, you don't, I don't, don't ruin it with anything else, I'm telling I'll you. I'll just have that, thanks. All right. So and cheesy. the scoop and everything, it's like just put in that bowl. the best. All right, I need a little soup ladle here. I'm gonna use my small one, hello. All right, here we go. The mushrooms, the beef, a little bay leaf in here. Oh, look at that, right on cue. Is that your your air fryer? That's my shallots. I love my it red when onions. a plan comes together. I'm telling you. So here are my here are my here are my uh, red onions. I don't know if you can see those. Again, everything contained inside this guy here. I've Wait, already got some done. Let's get a shot of those beautiful I want to see the, uh, onions, please. Look at that. Y'all, there's a little bit of bubbly action happening so on the side. So a little oil, yeah, the bubbly, like a little caramelization. Again, just nice and soft but nice burned kind of charred onion look. So for this, I'm just gonna take some of my shallots here. Oh, give me a little garnish. Yeah, oh, edible so garnish, the best kind, right? All right, a little charred shallot on this guy. Again, that sweetness. And then of course, gotta have fresh chives. You gotta have your fresh parsley. Okay, boom, that's Move one. That is a, I, that Julia. right there. That is a uh, Netflix night on the couch, passed out by like 8.30. All right, these are, I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call an audible, I'm gonna broil these. I'm gonna broil, stand by, two seconds, two seconds. All right, this is good. So you can see how easy everything, like once you kind of get it going, it's wearing a lot of hats, but it's not, this is not difficult by any means. Now for topping these, if I'm gonna use the marshmallow, I want something that's gonna be nice and uh, give me some kind of crunch to it or something. So texture, I like yeah. texture. Thank you. The word I was looking for, texture, because you have, whether it's whipped cream or marshmallows, you're going to have this kind of like soft texture, soft texture. You need something like, uh, Charlotte had a great idea. I like to use the hazelnuts myself because I love the hazelnuts with the chocolate like this, but she also said toffee chips. Or, so toffee chips are another one. Anything that you can kind of get it crunching. Almonds, um, peanuts, whatever you wanted to use. See how those are going. Ooh. Ooh, did you see them? Yes, I did. So if you've never oven baked a marshmallow, it's fantastic because uh, they will kind of swell. The air in there kind of makes them swell. And then when you go to touch it, it just kind of collapses in this like doughy, pillowy marshmallow cream. This smells amazing, by the way. And we did it in whenever six hours was the call time for regular beef bourguignon. All right, you ready for this? All right, I think they're ready. You ready? Here we go. I'm so excited. Here we go. Marshmallows. And like that warmness with the cool. So yeah. you see a little bit, so there's Look a little that. bit of brown on top. Look at I'm that. totally okay with that. Actually, I'll just set it right here. Because I'm going to show you again. We got cold cremo that was in the fridge. The great thing about this is make it in advance. Day is totally fine. Two days, even better. 
See how this Stop is. Stop it. Stop. What? Problem is, do I have enough marshmallows for all my cremo? So the cold cremo is going to kind of stop the cooking of the marshmallow. Again, the marshmallows are just pillowy and perfect. So this is my thing. Why, why would you like, you could put whipped cream on it. It's totally fine. But why not? Like it's not, it wasn't hard to do this, right? We threw some marshmallows in a pan and threw them in the oven until they got soft. And now they're like sticky, ooey gooey, delicious. And then I'm going to hit it with the hazelnuts. And you can do, that. just like Charlotte said, a little graham cracker on top. Really, pretzels, really nice. Pretzels, some crushed pretzels. And folks, this is live. This is all live. This is no, no editing, no whatever. This is just the live. What can happen in your house at that? I'm just going to put it all on there. That yeah, come on. Don't delicious. waste that. Nope, not going to do that. Would have done it. Would have done it over and over again. All right, hazelnuts. This is it, folks. We're done. Just leave Boom. the hazelnuts off one of them. How about I'll leave it off of two of them? Okay, I'll eat two of them. Thank you. That's so nice. Guys, it's just that easy. Really, really simple. A little milk chocolate, sea salt, cremeau. Everything coming together really, really nice. Now, doesn't have to be made together. You can make them differently. Uh, for more content, you can always go back to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash H-E-B. Check out all the great stuff there. We've got great videos from uh, not only uh, Charlotte and I for cooking videos, we've also got some great uh, celebrity chef content, some just great content in general. Um, go to our, uh, to sign up for next classes, you can always go to heb.com slash classes, sign up, see what's new. We're going to be here with you all year for the holidays, getting you guys prepped, anything yes. and everything you need, we have. And also, if you missed the 12-hour grilling open, you can go back, watch it on our Facebook and YouTube page. It's fantastic. It's a lot of fun. You can watch Charlotte, like hour 11, if you fast forward, she starts to look like she's going to fall asleep. That's the truth. Almost also, got to use my taser they gave me. Yes, almost, you but did I try to tase taser, but close. also... <laughs> Your lovely wife is a brilliant cook. Yes, she is. She really is a brilliant cook. Were you feeling cook. guilty about that? Because you made I was, the comment about the cook. I was. I was. Because <laughs> Don't she, feel guilty. She really is your better half, and I really do like her uh, a lot. And she is a wonderful cook. She is. She got that Italian, the Italian roots. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out. We appreciate you. Uh, we're so blessed to have you just uh, share this time. So we really appreciate it. You humble us. Again, check it out. YouTube.com slash H-E-B or sign up for classes. H-E-B.com slash classes. We will see you next time. Thanks again. Bye.